Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Lubquist. I'm a professor of biology at St. Michael's College. I'm a molecular biologist. And as part of my very small contribution to the COVID-19 movement, I'm making videos for my molecular genetics class and sharing them on YouTube. And this morning, I thought I would take a chance to look at some of the data or some of the evidence on chloroquine. If you happen to catch the news yesterday, you might have seen that there was um, quite an announcement saying that chloroquine may be um, potentially an effective drug drug against COVID-19. And so I thought we'd take the opportunity this morning to look at some of the evidence for that statement and see how much hope we should have. Um, give me a second here. I want to share with you some uh, PowerPoint presentation I made this morning. There we go. All right. And let me go to... Okay. So... Um, the, 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 the paper I want to share with you this morning was published on February 4th of 2020, and I have the full citation here in case you want to go and look at it. Um, I do want to point out that this is not by any stretch the only paper that's out there on chloroquine being an anti-COVID-19 um, treatment, but I thought I'd start with this one since it seemed to be one of the most cited. Um, and here's what this group did. They asked a very simple question. There are a lot of antiviral drugs in the market that are already FDA approved. Will any of them work on COVID-19? And here was their experiment. They took um, human cell lines that are growing inside of a Petri plate, what we call tissue culture. So this is not in an animal model, and that's really important to remember. And then they infected these cells with COVID-19, and at the same time, they added an antiviral drug. Then they waited 48 hours, and then they asked a very simple question, is the virus present? And they used qPCR, which is very simply just the COVID-19 test kit that we've been hearing so much about, and then they actually looked for the virus using microscopy. It's a pretty simple assay. Take some cells, infect them, give them a drug, and then ask the question, hey, after 48 hours, is the virus there or is it not there? All right, so let's look at what something like this might actually look like. And uh, let me change my, my writing tool here so I can actually write. Okay, so what I want you to remember is down here is gonna be the compounds that they're testing. And they tested a whole slew of drugs. I'm just gonna share with you three. Okay, and um, so on the x-axis will be the name of the drug, and then we have an increase in concentration of the drug as we move from left to right. Okay. The, the, the data points that we want to um, pay attention to are going to be in pink, and this is really just looking at the percent inhibition of the virus. And essentially, you want 100%, right? So you want to get to this point right here. If you get to this point quickly with the pink line, that means that you inhibited the virus um, effectively. And this was, this was done, the way they're detecting the virus is through qPCR. So now I want you to notice, let's, let's, let me switch back to my laser pointer here. So as you increase the concentration of the drug, notice that inhibition goes up. That's a good thing, right? So this appears to be um, an effective treatment against COVID-19. However, anytime you introduce a drug to a human cell, you wanna ask the question, does the drug itself kill human cells? And so simultaneously, they're measuring cytotoxicity. And cytotoxicity is just that. How toxic is this compound um, to human cells? Right here, we have cytotoxicity. And notice it's going to be a, uh, is that a blue? Blue square. And notice as you increase the concentration of the drug, you increase cytotoxicity to get to about 50%. Now, I know it's intuitive, but I'm going to say it. You don't want to ever take a drug that will kill 50% of your cells. So this was an antiviral drug that appears to be effective in, against COVID-19, but also seems to be incredibly cytotoxic to human cells. So this was a failure. Now let's look at two that they looked at that seems to, that seemed to be um, actually much more promising. So once again, down here, we have the name of the drug. So let's start off with chloroquine, right? And moving left to right, we're gonna be increasing concentration. And um, if you remember what we're looking for, is this, we're looking for, we're trying to get to the 100% line up here, and we're looking for, as we increase concentration, we get an increase of inhibition, we get to 100%, voila, look at that. As you're increasing the dosage of the drug, you're inhibiting the virus, the virus isn't present in those cells anymore. Second question, now what about that toxicity piece? Look where my, where my pointer is right here, that, that uh, blue grayish square. So is this drug toxic? Now look down here, Cytotoxicity is right around, even you might argue a little below, I don't think you can be below zero, but it's at zero. So chloroquine, even at super high concentrations, appears not to be toxic, and yet does seem to inhibit COVID-19. 
Here's a second antiviral drug that they, that they tested called um, rem, remdesivir. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Notice the trend once again, as you increase the dose, very quickly you get to a point where you have 100% inhibition. And it's, for the most part, not toxic until you get to high doses, but it's effective. Right here, let me, let me, get, let me actually draw this one. So notice by the time you get to this concentration, it's 100% effective, and most importantly, it's not cytotoxic. Okay, so it's killing or it's inhibiting the virus, and it is not toxic. Right here, we have 100% inhibition as well. Notice, right, and once again, not cytotoxic. Okay, so those are those are very very promising results. Um, how else might we examine if the virus is really there? Well, you can do microscopy. I'm going, to, I'm going to walk you through these figures. They're not nearly as complicated as they look. And essentially what you want to do is look for this. Um, anywhere, so this is the control right here. Um, anywhere where you see green, the green stain is for the virus. Um, what they're doing is um, NP is a protein that's in the viral, um, viral protein. You can stain it with this, green, with this greenish yellow color. And if you see it, that means the virus is present. And um, host blue, this compound that they have here, this is just a way to stain the nucleus. You can actually see how many cells are there. It's really a control. So looking over here, this is, these are cells that were not treated with anything except for a compound called DMSO. This is just a solvent for dissolving these drugs. And what you'll see is that these cells are filled with COVID-19. All right, so now let's look at this first compound that they tested right here, remdesivir, and ask the question, can we still see the virus if these cells have been treated with, with, this, with this drug? Okay, remember, this is the control. This is the comparison point right here. So this is how much green you see when the virus is 100% there. So starting down here at low concentrations of the virus, right, what I want you to notice is the amount of green has disappeared. As you increase the amount of um, that drug, it disappears even more. As you go to a higher concentration, the virus completely disappears. So not only could they, could they show inhibition through qPCR, but they're also showing that as you increase the amount of drug, the virus goes away. Now let's look at chloroquine. So here is our second compound that seems to be antiviral through qPCR. Remember, our control is over here, and we're looking at the amount of green in the control versus the amount of green that is here. Okay, starting at a low concentration of chloroquine, the virus is there. Increase the amount of chloroquine, the virus load drops. Increase it even higher, and the virus load drops even more. All of that is really promising. All right, last piece of data. This one is a little bit complicated, but run with me here. All right, down here, let me get my pointer. My laser pointer, a laser beam. Okay, so down here, we're gonna have our two compounds, right? So we have our first, com first compound, remdesivir, and our second compound, chloroquine. And once again, we're looking at percent inhibition, 100% is where we want to be. And they did three types of treatment in this experiment. Full-time means that they gave the cells the drug before the virus, and they exposed the cells to the drug the entire experiment. So in other words, if you preload with these drugs and you're always on them, will they inhibit the virus? Okay, this is really not a realistic situation for a patient because you're not going to be taking these drugs prophylactically and then be on them for months and months. But, you know, it was part of their experiment. Um, interesting enough, if you look at the, let me, get my, let me get my ink pen back here. If you look here, when you're on the drug all the time, um, you actually don't get, a, a, you only get 50% inhibition. And here with chloroquine, you get about 85%, maybe 80% inhibition. All right, the second point that I want to show you is what they call entry. And so what they did was they essentially, one hour before they infected the cells, they gave them the drug. So if you give them the drug one hour before, 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 you, before the infection, is it effective? In the case of this drug, the answer is no, interesting enough. But for chloroquine, yes. So if you take chloroquine one hour before you're exposed to COVID-19, and it had about 50% of the viral load. And then this is the one that actually is most informative, host entry. So this is referring to after the cells are infected. So this is really the clinical situation. After a human is infected with COVID-19, if we then expose them to or treat them with these drugs, what happens? In the case of remdesivir, you get about 25% inhibition of the virus. In the case of chloroquine, uh, you get about 45%. Now notice it's not 100%. 
but you know, part of this is the assumption is that your immune system is doing something. Like your immune system ideally is, is, is winning the battle. And you're just, it's like just giving your immune system another cannon and taking out some viruses so it, so it has a better fighting chance. All right, so, so what do we know about the mechanism of these two drugs, uh, chloroquine and um, the other drugs? Let me start off with chloroquine. Um, for those of you who are, are science nerds like me, I just couldn't help myself when I put the structure of chloroquine right there. And let me walk you through how viruses actually infect cells and then we can go into the mechanism. So in the case of, of COVID-19, you have uh, the virus with the spike protein. The spike protein um, and the, the viral protein coat ha protects the genome inside, right? This is the part that has to be copied for, in order for the virus to, to do its thing and to replicate and then escape the host and, and make more viral particles. Now, the virus itself is going to bind to a human receptor called the ACE2, which is for the angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Once it binds, you get a little structure function relationship there. The virus is taken in through a process called endocytosis, and you form this membrane-bound structure called an endosome. At that point, then, the viral genome is released right here. It starts being copied, and the infection is off and running. All right, chloroquine disrupts this process in two ways. The first thing it does is it makes the binding of the virus to the receptor a lot less effective. That's good. If it doesn't bind to the receptor, it can't invade cells. The second thing it does is it actually changes the pH. Um, let me actually get my pen here. It actually changes the pH in here of this structure called the endosome. And by doing that, the viral genome can't escape. If the viral genome can't escape from the endosome, no copying of the viral genome, no infection. So that's the mechanism. All right. How about the second the mechanism of our second molecule, a second antiviral that shows some promise, remdesivir. Now, um, for those of you, and I'm gonna guess most of you are not, but for those of you who are molecular biologists, what do we have here? This is adenosine monophosphate. This is, you add two more phosphates to this, and this is what we call the ATP, right? It is a subunit that is found in RNA. It is also a subunit um, that is used to, to store energy in the cell form of ATP. This is remdesivir over here. And really all I wanna do is call your attention to this part. So what I want you to notice is that remdesivir is different from adenosine by this one little group. What does that mean? It means that it can't actually be used to make the viral genome. In other words, this drug works by stopping the virus from being copied. All right, let me go back now. So what do we know at this point? Should we be excited? Should we be, um, well, what do we know as scientists? This paper was published on February 4th. Since then, it's been followed up and cited by 122 studies just in the last, I don't know, that's six weeks. So six weeks, um, 122 groups have already published on and followed up on this work. Um, I wanna point out that this work was done in tissue culture. Tissue culture is not an animal model. So it needs to go into something that's, that's, that's it's multicellular, and um, before, before we can really say that it works. The, uh, the one that I find most interesting is chloroquine, because chloroquine is, first of all, uh, can be used safely at incredibly high concentrations, not incredibly high, but can be used safely at high concentrations that has very low cytotoxicity. And um, it's, uh, it's already been, it's a potent antiviral and anti-malarial drug. So um, I'm gonna put my bet on hopeful. I'll go with hopeful. Okay, that's all I got for you today. Uh, keep up the good fight, and remember, rise like the phoenix. No, rise from the ashes like the phoenix, always. Love quits.